In this video I'm going to demonstrate how we can use Blend to modify the standard button template to have these nice little extensions on the corners. And what we're going to do is we're also going to make it so that an end user can modify the length of those extensions without having to go into the template after we've done some nice little magic inside of it. So let's first create a button in Blend. Now what we're going to do is go inside of this button. We're going to create a copy of the template and let's call this button with extensions and we're going to turn off the uh, viewing a bunch of the elements here so what we're going to do first is create a grid that will contain our little extensions and we'll put that behind everything else so it doesn't get in the way and within that we need to somehow get a parameter into this button into the template that controls how long the extensions are going to be. And what we're going to do is we're going if we go back out to the button, pretty much all these uh, properties are already being used for other things. So what we're going to do is we're going to piggyback on top of the tag property and let's just give it a value of 10. Remember this is string so we're going to have to convert that string. And within that we're going to put a text block. There's that text block and we're going to bind it. Let's turn off everything else so you can see that text block. We're going to bind that text block's text property to the tag property. So it fills in with 10. And we're just using this as a way to get that value 10 into our project, into the template. Okay, so let's turn back on the background and the content presenter. And it's not important that you can't see that text block. In fact, I'm actually going to turn off its visibility since it's not important that it show up at runtime. Okay, within the extensions, now let's uh, let's start with the upper right hand corner. Let's use a rectangle to represent that extension in the upper right hand corner. Actually, for this project, let's move the extensions in front of the background so we can actually see what we're doing. But what we will do is we will set it. This is going to be, let's make this extension top right V and V for vertical. So m let's make its height, we'll data bind it to that text blocks text value. Now notice text doesn't show up here because it's a different data type. It's a string and this is expecting a double. But when we show all properties we can now see text. Click on that and now we see 10. So now its height is 10. And the width, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the width matches the border thickness on the right edge of the button. So we will data bind this to the background objects border thickness, the right edge. So, and let's get rid of its stroke. And we will make its fill the same as the border brush. So if we zoom in, there's our little extension. It's not quite in the right place, so let's move it to where it needs to go. So we'll push it over to the right side, and we'll align it with the top. Now it's still not sticking up by its whole length. So what we do need to do now is we need to do a render transform on its translation in the Y to move it up. But to do that, we're going to have to multiply it by, we're going to have to multiply that data binding. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little piece of code called the multiply converter and this actually ships in blend I'm just adding a simpler version locally to the project I'm going to recompile and now I will data bind the Y translation of that extension to that same uh, text block value which is its text so that pushed it down and what I want to do as I said let's add that value converter is I'm going to add the multiply converter and I'll give it a converter parameter of negative one and that moved it up now I noticed something else we have this gap between the corner the rounded edge of the corner and that extension so for this style, we actually don't even want rounded corners. So let's get rid of the rounded corners, which are set in the corner radius property of various objects. There we go. Got rid of that. And also that uh, border fill, I don't really want a gradient on it. 
So in this style, I'm going to change the border brush to just be solid. And yeah. Okay, we'll go back into our button. So that's the upper right hand corner vertical and now we need the horizontal. So I'm going to copy and paste that and now uh, we'll get, make that the horizontal. And we need to tweak some of those properties a little bit. Right now we're binding its width of the, the horizontal to border thickness and we really want that to be this the height. So we will change that to be the text block text. Okay, so now it is pretty wide and we want to change its height to be the background border thickness top. So there it is and we need to change that translation. We really don't want it to be in the Y, we want it to be in the X. So we'll data bind in the X Again, we're just going to use that text block, text value, which is the tag, and now it has moved over. Let's go out to our button, so now we're looking again at the instance of the button, and if we vary the tag, we can see that those get larger or smaller, and what we also notice if we change the border thickness, the right thing happens to the extensions to match. We'll do one more visual tweak on these extensions and then you'll understand how you can add all the other corners. We will put an opacity mask on each one of these to have them nicely fade out to give it a more subtle appearance. And that's going the wrong direction so we'll flip it and we'll select our other and we'll put the same kind of opacity mask on it. What we're doing is we're setting one of the gradient stops to be transparent and we'll rotate that gradient and let's come back out and see how that looks. And there's our button. I'm going to turn off adorners so we can see without any extra visuals as we change the various properties. If we want to do something really fancy we can put a slider in our scene. Oh, we've got to turn my adorners back on so I can see the handles. We're going to hook that slider up. We're going to data bind its value to the tag property on the button. So we need to see all properties. And we want to make that two-way. So now we can see our project in the browser, and as I change the slider value, we can see the length, the, the extension change, and everything works as desired.